Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Kinky Weasel here. So, it's Wednesday afternoon. I have a bolt action tournament I have to play in on Saturday. It starts Saturday morning. This tank here, this Churchill tank, is in my list and I need it finished in time for the competition. So, let's see how quickly I can knock out a tank, shall we? From box to battlefield, built and painted, just see how quickly I can do it. Hopefully without compromising on quality. Let's get this bad boy opened. We've got all the usual gubbins from a Warlord kit. There's some instructions, there's some promotional blurb, a leaflet there. Here's the important bit, the uh, sprue with the bits on it. And you'll see we've also got the damage markers and the cards and the decals. Yep, very nice, very nice. So. Just get myself laid out, ready to go. Time will start when I clip the first piece off. There's some pieces I need to adjust depending on the version that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing the AVRE, the Armed Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers. Um, so let's find the pieces I need to snip off and let's get ready to start. Um, no. Oh, yes, yes, no. Found it? No, not found it. I have found it. Yep, so here we go. Go! Right, we've started. Don't worry, I will speed up the boring bit. You don't have to watch me do all the boring bits in real time. That would be asking far too much. This model making is a piece of cake, isn't it? When you can do it at 20 times normal speed. If only, eh? If only. So five minutes in, um, I'm trying to work out which way around the tracks go. Um, you'd think it would be obvious, wouldn't you? But it's not as obvious as you might like to think. However, I'm glad to say that all these wheels are actually cast in place. I didn't have to stick those wheels on, um, which is the beauty of the Warlord Wargames um, kits, the proper modelling kits. I'd be forever sticking those wheels on and would lose interest really quickly. Hooray! 10 minutes in and I'm starting to glue the tracks on. They're not going on very easily though. No, that bit goes the other way round, Weasel. The other way round. So 15 minutes in, I'm doing the second track now, the second set of tracks. These are going much, much easier. They seem to fit so much better than the other one. Oh, hang on a minute. Yep, that means I did the first one wrong. So I've had to take it apart and redo it again. Oh, what joy. That minor mishap overcome, we're now just coming up to 20 minutes in and the track units are going on. Or at least they will go on when I work out how they go on. Bit of wiggling, bit of leverage. Ooh, just be careful with that knife, you know what you like. Oh, that's going to be nasty. Ugh. Anyway, yeah, it, it fitted together and thank goodness for that he's put the knife down yes thumbs up top of the holes going on now needs a bit of a squeeze to pop it in but yep it will fit it will fit you're 25 minutes down and you find me just holding these two bits together waiting for the glue to dry um, yeah, it's fun, isn't it, this model making? 
Oh, I know. Why don't? Yeah, I'll just just clip this on here. I don't need to hold it, do I? That's a really good idea. Why didn't you think of that earlier? Yep, yeah, and that one there. Brilliant. Aren't you a clever boy? Well done. So, uh, while the glue's drying, I'm going to get on with the turret. Just need to work out which turret relates to the model I'm making and, and which bits go in which turret. And, oh, um, yeah, I think, no, not that one. It's the other one. But yeah, that's the turret. That's the bit I need, I think. Half an hour in, and I think these are the hatches that I need for my chosen tanks turret. Yep. Uh, not fit in that well, but well, with a bit of trimming, I can just about get them to fit. And they'll do, I think they'll do. They didn't fit very well because they were the wrong ones. Um, these are the right ones and these fit much, much better. Yeah, much better indeed. Funny that, eh? Actually, I do have to say the turret went together very nicely um, once I found the right parts. Yeah, definitely recommend use the right parts and these kits go together so much easier. Well, would you look at that? We're 45 minutes in and I've just finished the turret. The turret is just, yeah, looks good, doesn't it? Look at that massive, great big gun on the front. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Everything went swimmingly from then on, really. Um, yeah, no problems at all. Well, unless, of course, you count this weird extra long piece of track sticking out that I had to just snip to fix. I don't know how that happened. Obviously I did something wrong, but this is where plastic clippers come in handy. And even better, look, there's a piece of armor that goes over the end, so you can't even see it anyway. Yeah, from then on, it really did go swimmingly, um, which would make very boring viewing, which is why I've speeded it up so you don't have to watch me just sticking bits of plastic together. We're now an hour into the project and it's just the extra little bits and pieces, gribbly bits, these things which I think are radiators which stick on the side. Just those bits and pieces really, the finishing touches to get this model finished. So coming to the end of the build, I can say that this as a kit was actually quite nice to put together if I take my time and spend a bit more time looking at the instructions and a bit less time hurrying, then it would have gone up together much better um, first time round, which would actually in the long run save me some time. Moral in that story, isn't there? Ta-da! One Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers presented for your inspection. Looks all right, doesn't it? Best get some paint on her now, I suppose. And this is the first paint I'll be using on her. Um, I'm going to be base coating with Angel Green from Army Painter, um, a spray can. So let's get that on and see what it looks like. It looks green. It looks dark green. Let's move her over here. Um, paint's not quite dry yet. Um, so let's leave it to dry and then get started on the next steps. These next steps will consist primarily, or actually solely, of dry brushing and washing. Um, excuse me while I uh, just use a hairdryer to speed up the drying time of this paint. So the first paints I'm going to be using are going to be these two. 
They are Army Green and Angel Green. A bit 50 50 mix of each that I'm going to do as a dry brush over the whole of this model using a big, cheap makeup brush. I would recommend you buy yourself a cheap makeup brush from a cheap shop and don't steal your wife, girlfriend, daughters or whatever. Um, it doesn't go down well. So just finishing up this stage. Uh, no, oops. Yeah, just a nice big rough dry brush over all of it. Um, the tone isn't significantly different from the base coat, so it will show, but only very subtly at the moment, um, as you can see. But yeah, that's all right for a first stage. So the next stage is going to be a dry brush with just army green, just the army green. Um, and I will be using a smaller brush to dry brush with, um, and it will be a much lighter application over primarily the corners and the edges and the ridges. This stage, I think, is the stage that makes all the difference. Um, so, you know, concentrate on what you're doing. But what I would say is do not use a decent brush for this. This process proper knackers brushes. Believe me, it really, it really kills them. So, yeah, just finish a little bit of a tickle here and a little bit of a tickle there. Just to, just to make sure I've got all the bits I want to get. But essentially... That's all the dry brushing done, really. Apart from that bit and that bit. Oops. And just that bit there. And maybe that bit, but, but now it's finished. So let's get the turret back on. And have a look at this beauty in its very nearly finished state. You could be finished now, actually. You could just put that on the table, I think. Um, but I'm going to put a wash over. It just makes the whole effect just a little bit more subtle. But overall, yeah, that looks all right, doesn't it? Not bad for, what, two hours work? Start to finish, box to this. It's, yeah, yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, and, yeah, I'm happy. So yeah, I'm going to do a wash. I'm going to use this. No, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use this one, the military shader. It's a slightly sort of got a more brownie tinge to it than the green wash. And I'm using this quick shade wash mixing medium, which I think is a magic potion. Um, it really works nicely with shades um, when you apply them. Uh, I swear by it. So I'm going to use precisely, precisely this much shader. Exactly that. And just a little bit more. And I want to use about half as much again um, of the medium. So yeah, two parts wash to one part medium. And I'm going to use some of my paint rinsing water just to a couple of brushfuls just to thin it down a little bit more. Um, so yeah, look at that. Nice consistency. Don't worry about looking cloudy. It will dry clear. Um, and it's simply just a case of getting a fairly generous layer all over it. Don't forget the turret. Um, don't laugh. I have done that in the past um, and it's really annoying. Um, so everything's going to be the same color with the same wash. Do it all at the same time. It makes the job so much easier. So let's just put them down. And yeah, we're going to leave them to dry and see what it look like. So uh, by the strange and mysterious magic of YouTube, they should be dry any time now. There you go. Told you. So here it is finished. Um, well, at least dried. As you can see, the shade has settled into the recesses, emphasizing the shadows. And it's also helps to blend the difference between the highlights and the main body just gives a much more subtle effect there is a slight sheen to it that's not a fault with the wash it's a fault with me i think i didn't shake it properly before i put it on but that's not gonna be an issue because i'm gonna put a matte coat on at the end anyway but there we go um 
the main body of the tank is done. It's just going to be the details and the tracks now. So an hour and a half in, and I'm going to be painting the tracks. I'm going to be using this um, Army Painter Dark Stone, which is a very dark um, brown. It's a dull, dark brown. Um, the reason I'm painting the tracks that colour is, yes, they are metal, but they would have rusted and dirtied very, very quickly. So this looks like a nice old corroded metal colour for the tracks. Um, I'm going to be using this slightly diluted, thins down a little bit, um, just paint over the tracks, getting all of it, edges, insides, everything. So yeah, um, brown paint on the tracks. You don't really need to see that in um, in real time. It's a paintbrush, it's brown paint going on the tank tracks. Um, pretty much what you see is what you get. So there you go, some plastic painted brown. Um, I missed the spare tracks hanging on the side of the tank. So hold on a minute, talk amongst yourselves, I'll just get those done. So that's done. Um, I'm now going to be painting the metal accoutrement, accoutrement on the outside of the tank. Things like the tow cables and you know, crowbars and the shovel heads and things like that. Um, I'm going to paint them all in Army Painter Necromancer Cloak, which is a very dark, sort of grey, dull, desaturated grey kind of colour. Works very well, I think, for dull, old, dirty metal. I'm not going to be shading or highlighting any of these bits. Look, it's a gaming piece. It's not a display piece. Yeah, I want it to look nice, but I'm not worried about perfection. Um, I'm too old for all of that. Just going to be touching in the wooden handles to the tools, the shovels and the axes and what have you. I'm going to be using Army Painter Leather Brown for that, um, which is a nice leathery brown colour. That's what it says on the bottle. So there you go, they're done. They look fine, don't they? I mean, I'm not sure anyone will even notice them, to be honest, but I've done them. They're there, I've painted them. So before I do the weathering and dirtying, I will just stick the water slide transfers on, stick the decals on. Um, done a bit of research, can't really find any information on what decals won't wear on these engineers vehicles. So I'm just going to go by what I can work out from the box art. Seems like a plan. I'm sure you know the score with these things, cut out the ones that you want, soak them in water for a bit till the design slides off. Slide the design off, stick it on where you want it to go, um, and dab it dry afterwards, being careful not to move it. And there you go, two lovely yellow circles on my tank. It was at this point I went a little bit off-piste and stuck an allied star on the top of the tank hull. Um, thought to make it identifiable from the air so it didn't get taken out by allied planes. But if I'm honest with you, um, it looks shit, so I took it off again. And now we come to the best bit, my favourite bit. I'm using some cheap old makeup brushes and I'm going to be dirtying this tank up, weathering it, making it look like it's actually existed in a war zone rather than straight out of a factory. I love doing this stuff. This is my favourite bit. It's really, really simple. You get some brown or whatever dirt in your battle zone color you want to use paint on your brush brush most of it off so it's pretty much dry and then you just stipple it on and stipple it on and stipple it on being gentle not using very much paint at all and you slowly build up the layers and oh look at that it's beautiful it's beautiful if you want, you can paint it on your hand as well. I do, just that's just to feel how much there is pigment wise on the brush. You don't have to, but it makes you look like a professional painter if you do that. 
So here we are, two hours in, and we're nearly finished. Just sitting here now, enjoying the the weathering, just dabbing the paint on, making it look dusty, making it look dirty. So there you go, two hours, ten minutes. I could stop there if I wanted, but I'm not. I'm going to be doing a similar thing with some black paint just on the end of the muzzle of the cannon just to make it look a bit sooty so that it's been fired again it's a detail most people won't even see but i know it's there and so i'm going to do it and it's my tank and i'm going to do what i want with it all right so now that i finished arsing around with the cannon um i'm moving on to the very very last stage of the weathering and what I'm using here is very, 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 very diluted acrylic paint in the same colour as I dry brushed on. Um, and I'm washing it into sort of the crevices where dust would gather. Now, because it's so very, very diluted, as the paint dries, it will actually retract into the um, crevices through capillary action. And it will dry, giving it a dusty look. Um, but you need it properly, properly dilate, di diluted, um, you know, one part to 10, one part 20 paint to water, um, really, really, really diluted. Did I say you've got to dilute it? Because you do, you have to dilute it. So here it is dried. Um, and once it's dry, you can see some areas where it hasn't necessarily taken to the extent that you want it to, or I want it to. So I'm going to go back in and just touch it in, in some of the areas that I missed. For instance, the turret, I completely forgot about the turret. Um, I did say earlier, didn't I? Don't forget the turret. So what did I do? Forgot the turret. So I'm just going to do a little bit more titivating. Eventually you have to decide that it's time to stop, that you've done enough and this is that time. I've done enough and I need to stop. So here you go, two and a half hours, two hours, 25 minutes from box to battlefield. I'm happy with this. Um, I don't think that would disgrace any war games tale. So there you go, it's done. So thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, other than that, all that's left to say is um, bye for now. Take care. Bye bye.